Hey guys, my name is Sally and I'm a certified anesthesiologist assistant. I graduated Emory's program about three years ago and I currently work in Atlanta. Um, I'm going to answer some of these questions that you guys sent in to me. So the first one is, what interested you in your field? I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon and I worked for one for a period of time as his medical assistant. He had his own surgical center where he employed his own anesthesiologist. And that's when I was introduced to the world of anesthesia. With orthopedic surgery, it's a pretty long journey that you have with your patients. Um, you meet them at the beginning of their injury, you operate on, on them, and then at the end, you know, maybe they recover from the surgery, maybe not. They go through physical therapy for six to eight weeks. So it's a long time. Whereas anesthesia, you meet your patient 10 minutes before the procedure, have a chat with them, and then you do the procedure, give them the anesthetic, and then give report to the nurse afterwards, and then you're done. You probably will never have to see that person again. So that's what I like about anesthesia. It's hands-on, you do IVs, you intubate, you do A-lines, um, you give drugs, very instant gratification, you know, whereas orthopedics is just long-term. The next question says, what is your typical day-to-day -day schedule? This varies, but I typically work two 12-hour shifts and one 16-hour shift. So you wake up in the morning, 5.30, get ready, and you have to show up at the hospital around 6.30. You have about an hour to set up, get your patient's IV in for a first start case at 7.30. After that, it depends on what room you are assigned to. It's a different room, typically every day with a different surgeon, different attending. If your room has one case all day long and it's like a 12 hour cranny, then you're stuck in there for 12 hours or until whenever your shift is over. But if you are in a room, say GI endoscopy, those cases, the colonoscopies, the EGDs, those can go a lot quicker. They can take 30 minutes and you can go through 10 of them before 12 o'clock, depending on where you work. So. It's very different, which is what I like about anesthesia. Not every day is the same. Every day is different. You can be in neuro one day, you can be in vascular the next. Some hospitals will have OB, other hospitals have cardiac. It just depends and it varies. So that's a pretty cool thing about being an anesthetist. If you want, you can specialize in cardiac and do cardiac only, but there are places where you can do half and half, half cardiac, half general. Other places you can focus on pediatrics only, and then other hospitals, you know, will have a combination of both. So it really is up to where you work. What can a CAA expect as far as the lifestyle and work you do? Work-life balance is really important, but it's pretty easy to do as a CAA. You're only scheduled minimum of 40 hours. You can, some people even go part-time and do 36 hours a week. It really just depends on where you work. But if you are in a small group, then it can be a little harder to get call shifts and weekend shifts and even nights covered because you know it's just divided amongst a small group of people. But if you're in a large group, then you may only get assigned once or twice a year to do those shifts. And you can probably just give them away to those people who want to work more. It's not bad. I work a lot because I have nothing else to do. I don't have kids or a family, anything like that. So it's nice to be able to pick up, but you have the option not to work if you don't want to. So that's great as well. It says, what was your pre-professional undergraduate academic path. My major was exercise and sports science. I wanted to become a orthopedic surgeon. So I took all the pre-medical courses, but then I pivoted. I found out about anesthesia my senior year and I had all the prerequisites ready. I took the MCAT already. So it was easy for me to apply. I just applied. I got my interview like two weeks later and then I got accepted. A week later after that and it was just a no-brainer for me anesthesia all the way next question 
How are CAAs different from other medical specialties such as CRNAs or anesthesiologists? So the difference between a CAA and a CRNA are the two different routes of schooling that they go through. CRNA, you get a bachelor's in nursing, you work in ICU, and then you go to nursing anesthesia school. Whereas the AAs, you get an undergraduate degree in any major, and then you apply to AA school for a two and a half year program, and then you graduate and you start working. So this this route is a little quicker. Um, however, you are limited to a certain number of states that you can work in. CRNAs can work anywhere they want. They can travel. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. And I think that is very important if you're trying to decide if you want to be an AA or not. Definitely make sure that, you know, you're going to live in one of those states and be okay with it. How are CAAs different from anesthesiologists? Anesthesiologists will oversee you. There's like a one to four ratio. At most, anesthesiologists can supervise four anesthetists at a time. They will come in during induction and then leave, start another room with an anesthetist, and then come back during any important moments in the procedure if there's like any emergency going on. And then at the end, come back for extubation. So anesthesiologists like pop in and out of different rooms that they're supervising um, for the important parts. Whereas the anesthetist will stay in the room the whole time with the patient from beginning to end. What qualities do CAAs have that make them enjoy or be proficient in their field? It's really good if you are calm, can stay calm in a situation massive blood loss, um, difficult airway. If you're able to remain calm and think through the steps and know what to do next, then that makes you a really good anesthetist. Do not panic. If you panic, you make the surgeon start to panic. Everyone in the room starts to get antsy. So just stay calm. That's key. If you are able to manage stress well, then that can be very helpful in anesthesia. There are certain moments at work where you can get really stressed out so be sure to what do you enjoy most about your job i love doing ivs or a lines over here they go in your artery and you do it by like palpation um, sometimes if it's really difficult you can pull out the ultrasound which is even more fun but that's my favorite part about anesthesia doing the lines. It just, you feel really good, especially if they're a difficult stick um, and that you're the only one who's able to get it. I don't know, it's just, feels nice. I don't like intubating that much just because you're, you're like in someone's mouth and sometimes it can be a little gooey and you know, secretions. It's not really my, my cup of tea. What do you enjoy least about your job? I work somewhat long days. I do 16 hour shifts and even 24 hour shifts. Those days can get a little overbearing because you know, you start a case, last three to four hours, then afterwards you get a 15 minute break and then you get assigned to a different room. The days where it's back to back to back to back for your whole entire shift, those days can get really overbearing and you can get overworked, you can also get burned out. So you really need to be careful about doing too much anesthesia. Always take your days off and always take a vacation from time to time. I don't know, balance, need a balance. What do you find most challenging about your field? I think the hardest thing for students or fresh grads um, especially is waking up the patient. Um, being able to wake them up efficiently and smoothly can take a little bit of finesse and experience. You have to know how the patient metabolizes the drugs, get a feel for it, and then know how fast the SIBO or whatever anesthetic that you are providing will blow off. The goal to waking up a patient is to have them open their eyes without coughing, and extubate the patient within five minutes of having the drapes down. That's like the ideal wake up. Smooth, 
no coughing, just eyes open, and then you pull the tube. That's not always the case. Um, sometimes it can take 10 minutes for a patient to blow off the gas just because they metabolize it slower. And other times, you know, the patient is just overstimulated by the endotracheal tube and they just, they just cough, cough on the tube. It happens. It's really nice when you get a perfect wake up. You, you feel pretty good. Last question. What advice would you give to students interested in your field? I know it's really hard, especially nowadays, but it's so important to get shadowing hours in. You have to see for yourself what it's like in the OR and what we actually do in the OR, what the IV is like, how to intubate, turning on and off the gas. Like you really need to see what goes on in the OR to decide for yourself if this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, so that's just really important. Okay, so that is all the questions that I got today. Um, hopefully that was helpful. If not, then you can DM me on Instagram at Anesthesia Sal, and I'll be able to answer them directly. If it wasn't helpful, I can just do another video and try. I'll try again. Thanks for watching. I think it's great that you guys have this organization. Um, AAs, the whole profession is, you know, really small, not a lot of material out there. So thank you for spreading the awareness. Um, maybe I'll meet one of you guys. Who knows? Okay.